Let's take this idea and apply it to faith. People have lots of questions about Jesus and his resurrection. I mean, science can't explain how a man comes back to life. So if it's unexplainable, does that mean it's not true? Okay, now that's a great question because we all have a tendency to deny the undeniable that's right in front of us mm -hmm. and to hold on to what's unexplainable. So I think the best way to answer that is to tell you a story about some people who actually made that mistake. Oh, well, I'm always down for a good story. So where does this story start? <laughs> okay, so one Sabbath day, mm -hmm. which was a Saturday in the Jewish culture, Jesus is walking down the road with his friends. They walk by this man who's sitting on the side of the road. He's been blind from birth, okay? So Jesus bends down and he heals the man. Oh, man, I bet that guy was psyched. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure he was. Uh, he actually goes running into town. He tells all his family and his friends and everybody is just in shock, right? They can't believe it. Some of the people in the town, it's kind of wild. Some of the people in town are like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. What a miracle. Yeah. Uh, but others are like, I can't even be the same guy. It's just somebody who looks like him. Because they couldn't believe that anyone blind could ever get their sight back. Well, so what did the guy do? Well... He starts explaining to everybody that Jesus is the one who healed him and gave him his sight. Okay, and then they believed him, right? Uh, not exactly. They, they take the guy to the religious leaders in town who were known as the Pharisees. Mm. And the Pharisees start interrogating this guy about how he can see now, right? Mm -hmm. So the guy tells him the same story. He gives Jesus credit, but the religious leaders don't like it. What do you mean they don't like it? Well... Here's what Jesus' friend John says that they said to the formerly blind guy about Jesus. Okay. Uh, John writes, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. That's right. what I mean. Okay, but he, he just healed a guy who's standing right in front of them. I mean, how can they criticize him after that? I know, but he had done it on their Sabbath day. They didn't think that was right. So they ignored the miracle right in front of them to criticize him for doing something in a way they didn't approve. Yeah, these guys sound pretty dumb. Kind of like not believing in baseball. I know. But we all have a tendency to ignore the undeniable if it doesn't fit how we want to believe. Because this didn't fit with how the Pharisees saw Jesus and with what the Pharisees wanted to believe. They just already made a decision to ignore Jesus. It didn't matter to them what the facts actually were. Well, okay. I mean... I think we can all do that, can't we? I mean, if we were raised in a home where Jesus wasn't an explanation for anything and we were taught not to believe in him, then you'll always try to ignore Jesus no matter how many facts you see. That is exactly right. But is it possible that maybe our Heavenly Father is trying to help us see what's real and help us see that we've been, I hate to admit this, but wrong? Because you should never ignore an explanation that's undeniable simply because it doesn't fit how you believe. And that's what the Pharisees were doing, right? I'm oh yeah, that's exactly what the Pharisees were doing. Okay. Matter of fact, they went so far as to call this guy's parents in. Oh. And they made the guy's parents confirm that he really had been blind. They made him vouch for him. They just didn't <laughs> want to believe Jesus was who he claimed to be. Okay, so how does this story end? Well, glad you asked because John tells us a second time the Pharisees summon the man who had been blind to come mm -hmm. meet with them. And they look at him and they command him, give glory to God, because we know this man talking about Jesus is a sinner. And the blind guy, formerly blind guy, replies, mm -hmm. well, whether he's a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Well, I mean, you can't argue with him either because, like, he's standing right there. <laughs> he's standing right there. So listen, this is really important to remember. Okay. You always want to choose the undeniable over the unexplainable. In other words, never ignore what's undeniable in front of you just because you can't explain it yet. After all, there's probably an explanation, and eventually you'll find it. So if Jesus is personal to you, but you still have questions and you still have doubts and you can't explain everything, that's okay. Just hold on to what's undeniable. You hold on to Jesus, to the fact that he's personal to you and carry your doubts and your questions with you until you can find answers to them. So, like having doubts and questions, that isn't wrong? Oh, no, 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 not wrong at all. I've got lots of questions and doubts. Huh. But let me tell you what I've discovered. Hmm. I doubt when I focus on what's unexplainable hmm. and I forget about what's undeniable. In other words, I doubt when I forget what God has done and I get focused on what I can't get him to do, maybe. Hmm. I doubt when I can't get God to stay in my little God box and act like I want him to act. And, you know, I forget all the things that I've seen him undeniably do in my life and in the lives of other people. 
That's when doubt starts to creep in. When mm-hmm. I focus on the unexplainable and I forget about the undeniable. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's happened to me too. So what would you say to a student who has questions and doubts and they feel like they need to find answers to all of that before they start following Jesus? Yeah, that's that brings up a real good point. So first, I would say to you that your questions and doubts are great. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with having them. But I would also remind you of what's undeniable. So 2,000 years ago, Jesus showed up as God in human flesh. He showed us how to live and how to love at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And then he died and rose again to pay the penalty for your sins and mine. Mm -hmm. And so many people saw him alive again after he had died that even though it was unexplainable, Mm -hmm. it was also completely undeniable. So you can trust everything Jesus said because he rose from the dead, including what he said about you. And Jesus said he loves you unconditionally. He accepts you completely and he wants a relationship with you. All you have to do is trust him enough to accept his forgiveness and his invitation to be a part of his family. And if you will do that, Jesus will become personal to you and you can carry all your questions, you can take all your doubts right into a relationship with him. Hmm. Well, let's give you a chance to do that before we wrap up. Sounds good. So if you're ready to begin following Jesus, you can do it sitting right where you are right now. In your mind, just tell him, Jesus, I want you to be personal in my life. I want a relationship with you. So I accept your forgiveness for my sins. Thanks for bringing me into your family. You know, here's what I love about that. That really is all it takes. Mm -hmm. And Jesus promises to be personal to you if you'll make that decision. So if that's something that you have done tonight or you want to do, Listen, share that with your group or share it with your group leader. And the reason I say that is because they just want to celebrate with you. Mm -hmm. Y'all can have a lot of fun partying over that. And then let's end by talking about this relationship between things that are unexplainable but undeniable. So here's a question for you. What are some things about Jesus' story that you can't explain but you know are undeniable? I want you to talk about that with your group. And we will see you next week for the conclusion of It's Personal.